Today, I wanted to talk about a tool I started using called SSHFS, which stands for SSH File System. This tool allows you to mount remote file systems on your local system so you can explore and edit files just as if you were editing things on your own machine or if you had SSH into a machine. But the big advantage here, especially for Vim and NeoVim users, is that you don't have to recreate your configuration on the remote machine or use vanilla Vim on the remote machine. You can go ahead and use your own setup, use your own plugins as if you're editing files on your local system. And when you save these files, they get automatically uploaded to the remote server, um, which is in short how it works. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to set up and install this. Everything's super basic. Uh, you can go ahead and install this with whatever package manager you, you're using, whether that's Pac-Man or Apt or whatever system you're on. Um, so usually it's just called SSHFS. So this is it, SSHFS. Go ahead and install that. There's something you need to do really to set this up. We can just go ahead and jump into this and start using it. So first thing you're going to want to do is create your mount point where you're going to be mounting the file system. I've created a local directory called avahe.tk, which is where my blog is hosted. Uh, you can see this is just an empty directory. There's nothing in here, uh, which is what you want. You want an empty directory that you're going to be mounting this to. And so the command that we're going to be running is this right here. Um, I'll have this in the description as well for ease of use. So it is SSHFS. And then this dash O is a list of options that you can provide uh, comma separated. You can check the man page to see what you'd want to use. I'm using default permissions to use the permissions on the server for files instead of the local file system. If you don't provide this, then anyone who has access to the mount point that you're creating can edit files on the remote system while it's mounted. So I like adding this and it's a nice example to show you how to add options. The next portion here is just going to be your username on the remote system at either the URL or the IP address of the server or remote system that you're on. And then we are separating this with a colon and then the directory you're mounting from the remote system. So I put just a slash and this means it is the root directory of that remote system. You could go ahead and use slash home slash your username if you wanted to mount your remote home directory, for instance. Um, and the next parameter, this is if you're using a non-default port, uh, which I'm using instead of port 22. Uh, you can completely omit this if you're just using the default port. And then finally, the last parameter is your local mount point where you're mounting this. So let's go ahead and run this. So everything worked out fine. Let's go ahead and list the files in this directory again. Now you can see this is the top level. This is the root, dire root directory on the remote server mounted here. So I'm going to go ahead and CD into this and then into my home directory on the server. Works just like CD. And then I can go ahead and ls the files here. So these are actually on the remote system and I kind of, I'm kind i kind of just retrieving this information. So if I want to edit one of these files, for instance, my ZSHRC, Let's go ahead and use NeoVim for the .zshrc and boom, loads up. And you can see down here uh, in my status bar, it's showing where this is. And you could go ahead and edit this just like anything else. And this is my local configuration, local plugins, all my settings, just how I like it. Um, so you can go ahead and edit this right to it and now this has been uploaded on the remote system so if i close this and leave it open it again here it is this is the file that i was just editing i'm gonna go ahead and, and remove that uh so one of the other big advantages is if you're using a tool like fzf to explore the file system like in my previous video that i showed you still get that functionality it's not quite as fast as using it locally because it does have to go over the network connection to explore the files but it still is nice nonetheless if you're uh, on the move and you know, whatever your, your situation is, it's a lot nicer in my opinion than SSHing in and having to edit files that way. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Uh, that's pretty much 
all I wanted to touch on today. One thing I will note is that sometimes it's a little weird to unmount this. So usually you'd use U-mount and then try to run it on the remote directory. I don't know if I'm doing something incorrectly, but usually I get this message saying target is busy. And I found that there's an easy way to still unmount it using F user mounts with the flags ZU. So U is unmount and Z is lazy unmount according to the man page. I don't really know what those do, but it seems to work. And then if I, you know, ls the directory again, it's empty. So it actually has been unmounted. Um, and oh, one other little note is there is a way to edit files on a remote system using SCP for Vim. So if you go Vim SCP and you, you can give the remote directory of a file, there are a couple reasons why this is better than using SCP. Uh, one is if you're on NeoVim, you don't get a prompt for the password if you're not using an SSH key. And the other is you kind of have to know where that file is on the remote system and you can't explore the remote file system super easily, like not in the same way that you can with this tool. Um, so I found it to be really useful and it's my new way for editing files on a remote server. Uh, so that's it for today. As always, if you have suggestions for new content you want to see, uh, questions, comments, just leave them down below and I'll get back to you when I can.